Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Praise the Lord. This is a new day that he's made. And he has blessed us with an opportunity to walk in this present day. Blessed by him and covered by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. So that we might do good works. Because we know the good news. That we've been reconciled to the Father. That we can follow him. And do his will. Because we're empowered by his Holy Spirit that lives in us. We are no longer prisoners in our flesh. Driven toward death by our sin. We are free to walk in the light. Of Jesus Christ and be used by Him to spread the good news and to save souls. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. As always, grateful. Grateful for the fact that you actually care for. And you care for us in such a special way that you would give all that we might be saved. And Father, we understand that our part in our salvation is to recognize you as creator and God. And recognize your son as putting on flesh, flesh of a man, being tempted and facing trials just like we do. Freely choosing to obey your will and die. Suffer death, beating, disgrace for our sins so that we might not receive what we deserve. Thank you, Father. We simply say thank you and we ask you to help us to understand what your will is for us. Help us to obey you, to walk with you, to trust in you. Help us, Father, to be led by you so that we might be sanctified. Sanctified to you, set apart for your good works. So that we might walk on this earth in clean garments because we're walking in the Spirit. In the Spirit, led by you unto good works and holiness because you command, Father, that we be holy because you are holy and we are yours. We pray, Father, that we become more and more holy each and every day by walking in the Spirit, following you. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, um, our daily devotional is titled, Compelled by Compassion. From the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. And it says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, 
he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. That, ladies and gentlemen, is compassion to see lost souls and to grieve for them. <clears throat> and to have a compassion toward them because if they're not saved, they're heading for destruction. Do you have compassion when you see lost souls? I must admit, I struggle with that. Okay, we're in section three. Fair and never forgetful. Better things. Hebrews chapter six, verse nine and 10. And it says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Though we thus speak, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. commentary says the author refers to his audience as beloved in verse 9 which indicates a shared relationship what will be shared applies to all believers the better things to come reflect the new covenant being so much better than the old covenant now all believers have direct contact with the Heavenly Father. Because of the priesthood of all believers, earthly priests are no longer needed. The pattern of salvation has changed, becoming so much better. In light of this, why were individuals wanting to return to a pattern of salvation which was inferior? How could they abandon Christ's sacrifice on the cross and subsequent resurrection from the dead? Verse 10 is a special statement of encouragement. Yes, Christ was rejected during his earthly ministry and then put to death in the most vicious, shameful manner. His triumphant resurrection validated all his verbal claims and miraculous ministry. Now, when questions of their commitment were evident, the author showed all was not lost. Their compassionate God had not forgotten their faith and commitment of previous service. They had maintained their loyalty and continued their loving service in the name of Christ. They had not been rejected and turned away from God's love. It is not uncommon for us to experience doubt 
even after working faithfully in the service of the Lord. It does not mean we have lost our salvation. Sometimes it is the result of Satan's attempt to shake our faith and turn us away from Christ. This is a positive to this experience. Oh, there is a positive to this experience. When we take time to pray and read the scriptures while allowing the Holy Spirit to lead our thinking and apply the truths to our heart. There's an insert here titled On Target. And it says, if you aim at and seek after nothing but the pleasure of God and the welfare of your neighbor, you will enjoy freedom within. And that's written by Thomas A. Kempis. The Two Commandments. Yes. Seek after nothing but the pleasure of God and the welfare of your neighbor. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. Because we need to have serious respect and reverence who God is. We take him too lightly. We do not fear him at the level that would motivate us to be compassionate in our faith. Our lack of compassion makes us lukewarm, not worthy of the sacrifice that Jesus did on a cross on our behalf. We must realize who this God is that we serve. He's not to be played with. We need to respect who he is and his position as creator of all and Lord of all. Thank you for your time this morning. I, I pray this message, uh, this teaching, helps you grasp your responsibility to the Father. You must seek him with all your heart, mind, and soul. Anything less is disrespectful to who he is as your God and your creator. So I encourage you to seek him. He will respond. He loves you. He cares for you. Give him that opportunity. Thank you for your time and have a blessed Thursday.